okay, I'm going to close the knife switch, we'll, which will put power to the station master and power to the track and let this uh, station master do its automatic uh, station stop operation. Our status light is blinking green as we accelerate. Now we're out on the main line. And we come around to where that uh, reed switch is under the track just before the block. You should see the LED, the, uh, LED red light blink once. There it goes. Now the status light is blinking red. That means we're deaccelerating. Now we're stopped. That'll pause. You can see it's blinking slowly about once per second. That'll pause for several seconds. Now it's blinking green. That means we're accelerating. Now we're back on the main line. And as I mentioned before, all these values can be varied. You can have a, a lot more gradual deacceleration, a lot more gradual acceleration, and a longer pause time, a much longer pause time if you like. Okay, watch the sensor on the right there. It blinked once, the LED sensor. The one on the left, the status light, you can see that's blinking red as it deaccelerates. Now it's blinking slowly, which means it's in the pause mode for several seconds. Now there it's blinking green, which means we're starting up again. And th this thing will continue performing this way, you know, all day long or for as long as you let it run. In our uh, previous piece of video, we were doing station stops where the train would stop every time it came around the uh, loop and went over the red sensor by the station here. Now, uh, this next part, we're going to demonstrate programming multiple laps. Uh, by multiple laps, we mean that the train can go around more than once before it stops. In other words, you can program it to go around two times before it stops, or three times, and up to, I believe, a maximum of ten times. Now, to do that, we have to go into what he calls secondary programming mode, which we haven't talked about yet. Uh, as you recall from earlier, this little control rod, you turn it clockwise for the normal run position over here, or you turn it around counterclockwise for the program mode, which I've already done. Uh, it's turned in the counterclockwise position. Now, halfway down is about 6 o'clock, so I'm going to turn this down about uh, 6 o'clock, and there's a little detent, a little dot in that knob, which you can't see, but I'm going to, uh, I can think I can see it if I get up close here. It's down, I get that, I got the little detent, the little depression in the knob down about six o'clock. So I should be in secondary programming mode. And the instructions to do that, uh, I got the instruction sheet here in front of me, are you, you close terminals three and four, again using either a magnet on the center or a wire, and I'm going to use the wire again. Close terminals three and four, and you count the blinks. And one blink equals one lap, which is what it's been operating at. And if we do two blinks, that should give us two laps, which is what I'm going to hopefully demonstrate. Now, it blinked. I, I made it blink twice before I released the wires from the terminals. And then you might have noticed it echoed back two blinks after I did that. So it should be set for two laps. Meanwhile, notice I've got the train... The train is sitting on the siding. The engine's still on the track. If you bring this thing out on the block when it and when it stops, you change it from uh, run to program. It'll take the power off the block, so the engine will just sit there. So I'm gonna get the. I'm gonna move things back to their normal operating position. I pulled it over here to get it close to the camera, but I'm gonna move things back to the normal operating position and then run this. Okay, we've got the camera back where we can see what's happening. I'm going to close the knife switch and start to train up. You can see our blinking green light, maybe, and now the train's on the main line. Okay, here's our first lap around the loop. 
the center flash, but you can see the train keeps going right on through. So now we're doing our second lap around the loop, and this time it should stop. Now you can see the status light went to blinking red, which means it's slowing down. There it is doing the slow red blink, which means it's in the pause mode. Now there it's blinking green, which means it's starting up. Let's let this happen. Let's let this sequence happen one more time just to get the effect. I could demonstrate the uh, reprogram it and demonstrate the 10 laps before it stopped, but you'd probably all be asleep at that point if, uh, if you're not asleep already from hearing me talk. There's our first lap through. Now again, we're coming around on our second lap, and again, the train should stop on the second time around. And there it is, the blinking red for the, on the status light, which means it's slowing down. So here's a demonstration of two laps around before the station stop happens. Uh, and again, we could uh, program this for three laps around, four laps around, five laps around, up to a maximum of ten laps around the loop before it made the uh, station stop. Okay, we're still in our uh, multiple laps mode. So when this train comes around and comes into the siding, not the siding, comes into the block and stops, I'm going to put it in program mode. Okay, there it's paused. And I'm going to switch it back to program mode from run to program by twisting this little control arm all the way counterclockwise. You notice all the the lights went out and that like I mentioned earlier that takes the power off the block so you can do this without even removing the engine or removing the train if, if you let the train come in on the block and then change it from run the program so what we're going to do next remember if you recall earlier on the uh, stop center terminals when we went into program we programmed it for two blinks uh, which was gave us about a five second delay time now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and program that for I think 11 blinks uh, which will be an infinite waiting time. You can go from 2 blinks to 3 blinks to 4 blinks uh, which up to 10 blinks which gives you pause times between 5 seconds and uh, about 30 minutes according to the documentation. Well, I'm going to go in here and get on the, uh, and I'm going to change my lights here. I'm going to go in here and again hold this wire on terminals 5 and 6, which is a stop terminal. I'm going to program that for an infinite wait time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It went to a study blink. That means we're at maximum infinite wait time. Now there it's echoing back what we put in it. Now that should be programmed for maximum wait time. Let's turn the uh, control arm from the program to the run, and that train should start up. Now we've still got it programmed for two laps, so the first time it should go through the block without stopping. Okay, here we come in for our second lap, and again the blinking red light which puts us into deacceleration. 
now we're paused. Now we should be we're in, in we're in an infinite pause mode, which means that train's going to sit there essentially forever. It will never never start up. However, what I've done also I've connected the acceleration terminals and these green wires here. I'm not sure if they show up in the camera, but I've got the acceleration terminals center terminals connected by this green wire and out this wire to a push button. So when this thing detects a closing of a circuit, either a reed switch coming together from a magnet on the train uh, or a push button. In this case, it'll start that train up. Uh, and and how, how this system could work if you had a display layout or something and you wanted your uh, you wanted a train to sit when nobody was there, but uh, have it run when somebody wanted to see it run, like, like say some kids wanted to run the train, you have a sign that says push button to run the train. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to push this button and you can see that the center blinked and it went into the blinking green mode, which means it's going to start up. So what we should do is, is again, we take two laps around the track, but again, it'll come in and stop after two laps and sit there forever or until the button is pushed. In this scheme of uh, hooking it up to a push button like we're doing, uh, that's in the documentation. I didn't think of this myself. Okay, here's our second lap around, so it uh, go should go into the slowdown mode and stop. Okay, there's the flashing red for deacceleration. Now it's paused, and again, it's going to sit there and wait forever. If this was a, a display layout and nobody was looking at the layout, your train would just sit there and rest. But then if somebody came along and they wanted to uh, see the train run, you tell them to push the button or you put a sign to push button to run train. There's the button being pushed. Now the train goes into accelerate mode and it starts up. And again, we'll take another two laps around. The train will take another two laps around and stop again. And, and as before, this could be programmed for three laps, four laps, up to 10 laps before it would stop and then you'd push the button again. Now we're almost to the scheme that we're going to use for two train operation except for two train operation instead of me pushing the button to start the uh, train up the second train with the magnet will be the, the, the stimulus that causes that train to pull out of the block. Okay, there we are again. Stopped on the block. Went into pause mode. Again, infinite wait time until the center is closed and button starts it up again. Here's our train coming around for the second time. So when it trips the uh, deacceleration sensor, it'll slow down and stop. Again, we're still in the uh, infinite wait mode. So what I'm going to do now is turn the knob all the way counterclockwise to change it from run mode to program mode. What, I, what I'm going to do is remove that uh, two second that remove that uh, two times around multiple laps and just change it to one lap around. So it's in program mode. Now I have to go into secondary program mode. So that again, we turn that, again, following the directions, we turn the uh, little knob about halfway around. It's a little hard to see in the dark, but I should be in secondary programming mode. And I'm going to go into the uh, stop sensor and just change it to one blink. There, I believe I have one blink. So we'll turn this thing back on. And 
by jumpering terminals 3 and 4 together in secondary programming mode, I reprogrammed it to do one loop around instead of two loops around before it makes a stop. So now when we push the button to start it up, it's sitting there uh, currently blinking in the infinite pause mode, uh, waiting for a, a signal on the uh, acceleration terminals one and two. So when I close these term, when I close those two terminals by pushing on the push button, that'll start to train up and it should do one loop around and stop again. You can see it did, uh, instead of two loops around as previously, it's now doing just a single loop around before it stops. And as mentioned before, you can program this to do up to about ten loops around each time before it stops. So once again, the train is sitting there in infinite pause mode. Again, when I push the button, it'll start it up. Now this time I'm going to hold the button down, simulating maybe if an over-enthusiastic child was holding on the button. So if you hold down the button, it doesn't stop, it goes on through since I'm holding the button. Release the button, you notice it went through and it sent the, set the uh, status light from orange. When I say orange, I mean red and green at the same time. It set it from orange back to green. So this time the train will come through and stop in the block and wait for the button to be pushed again.